Reading with your kids. Hey, 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 so great to see you. Come on in. Hi, my name is Jed Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast, coming to you from the beautiful neighborhood of Reedville and the southwest corner of Boston, Massachusetts. We hope that you are connected with us on social media. Facebook, we're facebook.com slash reading with your kids. On Twitter, it's at Jed Lee Magic. And on Instagram, it's at reading with your kids. We have a wonderful guest for you today. She is the author of Book of Hearts and also the author of The Girl Who Was Born with Glue in Her Brain. We are speaking with Jessica Laro Kane. This really is a fascinating conversation, and I'm so excited to introduce Jessica to all of you. I'm also really excited to remind you all that the Reading With Your Kids podcast is going to be live at the Chicago Toy and Game Fair, November 23rd and 24th at Navy Pier in Chicago. This is going to be an amazing time. Kids get to play with life-size toys and games. Life-size. Incredible. They're going to have a chance to meet inventors. They're going to have a chance to meet authors. They're going to have a chance to participate in totally interactive stage shows. They're going to have a chance to find out what it's like to be a guest on the Reading With Your Kids podcast. And everybody who takes part in our totally interactive booth will be entered to win an amazing, amazing prize basket filled with games and books. It's going to be a great time. And check this out. Listeners of the Reading With Your Kids podcast can save $3 off each ticket by going to shytag.com. That's C-H-I-T-A-G.com. Use the promo code R-W-Y-K. That's our initials, Reading With Your Kids. R-W-Y-K at checkout. Save $3 off of every ticket you purchase. And check this out. There is no limit. You can you can buy tickets for the entire neighborhood. Rent a bus. Come on down. Be a part of the largest Toy and Game Fair in North America, the Chicago Toy and Game Fair, November 23rd and 24th at Navy Pier in Chicago. Joining us on the line right now from the beautiful Adirondack Mountains in New York State. She is the author of, I, I think it's a really, really important book. Please welcome to the show the author of The Girl Who Was Born With Glue In Her Brain, Jessica Laurel Kane. Jessica, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Jed. It's exciting for you to be here. I didn't mention that the girl who was born with glue in her brain is a picture book, but it's not a picture book for three- and four-year-olds. Can you tell us a little bit about what the book is about and who it's for? Yes. Well, I really think I wrote it for um, someone who is like how I used to be when I was 13 or 14 or 15 or 16. I, um, I had, a, I had, um, such a, um, a hyper vigilant mind. I was aware of everything. And because I had been around a lot of disempowered thoughts, people who probably didn't mean to give them to me, but that kind of thing is pretty contagious. One person gives it to the next and the next generation and so on. So I, I walked around in my teenage years with all these negative thoughts in my head. And every time I was in a situation where I wanted to enjoy myself or other people, I had terrible insecurities. And it was to the point where these thoughts would just keep intruding into so many of my moments. And, and the book is about that about a girl like how I was so I suppose it's kind of a memoir slash picture book and it takes it tells a very brief story through several years of how that impacted this girl and what she eventually decides to do about it Mm -hmm. as I'm looking at you here through the magic of Skype and I'm seeing a a confident woman with a really big beautiful smile on her face I'm (laughs) Taking it that that the girl who was born with glue in her brain has a happy ending. Well, I I don't know if I'm a real believer in in happy endings. I think that's part of the the problem. But I do believe in the possibility of rewiring one's brain. Or the concept of the idea of glue brain is that, sure, a disempowered thought can be stuck on one's brain 
but so can an empowered thought. Mm. So I feel like I, I'll always have those disempowered thoughts under layers of empowered thought. But what I didn't realize back then was that it's a habit like anything else, really. It's it's practicing and developing um, a strength and a familiarity with something new until it becomes more uh, status quo. So I, I I don't believe necessarily in a happy ending. I believe in chapters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's always another chapter. Or there's always another set of of circumstances that are coming that I think test all of us either inadvertently or on purpose to to step up our stand in the world and and have those empowered thoughts be the ones that make our choices instead of digging down into our hole into our vat of disempowered thoughts that so many of us have in the background or in the foreground mm -hmm. so so I feel like I've done a lot of practicing over the years, so I don't take my disempowered thoughts as seriously anymore. In fact, I think of them more like a scrapbook, like, oh, I wonder where this came from. I can take a walk down disempowered memory lane, which I like to do as a writer, and I, I go back and I think, gosh, I think that one came from my stepmother, the first stepmother, and oh, I see what she was trying to do. She was just giving me a dose of what her mother did. So when you understand... Um, where something comes from, it loses its power, its hold. So I feel like that's really what I've I've learned, and I don't go into that so much in, in detail. So I try to keep it simple mm -hmm. um, in the book. Um, well, yeah. I think it's, as I said, I think this is a really important book, and I know you do have, and we're going to talk about some of your other books, picture books that are for the younger younger crowd, but I. I this is such a unique project, and, and I think it's such a valuable project, and I think it's so important. There are so many young girls, so many young guys who have glue in their brain. They, they're, 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 st they're stuck and focused on these negative, as you say, disempowering thoughts, and, um, and, and, and they need something to help them get unstuck in, and, uh, you know, the, the deep, you know, kind of serious, typical uh, YA books are, are great, but I think there's there's a beauty in picture books, and 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 I, I think it kind of touches a an innocent time in our lives. You know, when you know things were simpler, and I, I think this is a, a way to kind of of uh, approach the topic in in a simpler way, and sometimes simple. Is better. Yeah, and I, I, I agree with you. And I, I also wanted to have a little bit of a sense of humor about it because I remember when I was younger, and and some adults would try to help me. It was so significant and and serious, mm -hmm. and it didn't resonate with me. So the book is uh, from my heart, and in my heart, I also like to find things that are amusing. Mm -hmm. um, because I find that when we're amused, we're more empowered. Um, and when we're more empowered, we tend to stick more interesting and mm -hmm. life-affirming thoughts to our brains. Well, so I, I, I wrote a book that I would have wanted to read. And, and I do like picture books. I, you probably know about, um, you know, it's an old self-help classic, but um, the Ram Dass's Be Here Now book. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I saw that first as a teenager and I loved it because it's an illustrated book and it's very simple, but it talks about real experiences that happened and, and such a funny and kind of, um, you know, ethereal way with a sense of humor. And, and I was always inspired by that, um, more than so many other books. So I feel like that was, Something I knew back then I wanted to one day be in a position to write my version of something like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I certainly agree with you in terms of, of the power of approaching, quote unquote, serious subjects in a lighthearted, fun, non-threatening oh. manner. Um, it, it's something that I've been doing through my educational magic shows. Can you talk a little bit, I, and you, 
it, and it's just that kind of helped me because I have a real hard time putting myself into the place where the people, you know, w- w- who think oh, we need to deal with these serious subjects seriously. We, we can't have fun. This is too serious. I created a disabilities awareness video many years ago that was fun and was very effective. And I actually had, um, I, I'll never forget, there was one uh, educator, uh, a superintendent of a, of a school district, and um, uh, that the, the superintendent, when they reviewed the video, got back to me and said, uh, uh, great video, you know, just the production was great. The, the message was absolutely spot on. The kids who previewed the video got the message 100%. They had a lot of fun. We're not going to be using it in our district. It's just too much fun. It's just not appropriate mm-hmm. for the classroom. And I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, it's so interesting. I, I've run across that situation myself, and and it's it's quite an interesting phenomenon. And I feel like some people, most people have been really um, encouraging about the Glue Brain mm-hmm. book, but... Every once in a while, I'll run into someone who's a, a therapist and just so disapproving and and saying like, "Well, you know, it's you can't poke fun at something like this. You can't show a child with intrusive thoughts something like this. It's inappropriate." And it, it, I just find it so fascinating. I think there there are so many. There's room and space on our planet for every every sort of mentality and perspective, but I personally disagree. In fact, I find that a personality that is so serious almost is the personality that causes anxiety in so many people. You know, there's people who um, have anxiety, and then there are people who actually cause anxiety. And, and the people who cause anxiety from their their stance, that they're so sure they know the antidote for everyone's problems. Mm-hmm. These people, in my experience, don't recognize themselves as people who could be causing anxiety for other people. So I try to filter um, other people's um, opinions or or guidance about about what I do because because of that and and also you know thinking about what what you said um all the children loved it so what a disservice that they mm-hmm. wouldn't continue to share it with audiences because of their perspective that serious is somehow more professional or mm-hmm. more um uh proper or more uh, um, appropriate for the evolution of our spe- species, <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I think the you know the I you know this this idea of these of these intrusive thoughts I, I, to me it's just well if we make you know look at them lightheartedly you kind of take away some of the power and fear that kids may have from these intrusive thoughts. Absolutely, yeah, and. And I think every every person has a different recipe, different ingredients that they're missing that they need in order to feel empowered, mm-hmm. you know. And maybe someone who's been like totally silly and so their whole life, maybe maybe they would um, need to have some more serious perspective. But most people who have these intrusive thoughts are. Are, are needing some ingredients to help them laugh and appreciate mm-hmm. themselves and be the star of their own movies in mm-hmm. a in a way that's um, positive and life affirming and entertaining. <laughs> I like that expression. Be the star of your own movie. <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, we don't want to be narcissists, but certainly we are the star of our own movie, mm-hmm. and we. We can also appreciate that everyone else is the star of their own movie as well. But when we leave ourselves out and don't be the star of our own movie, there's only going to be suffering because mm-hmm. we want to be the hero on our journey. And and if we don't feel entitled and uh, that we can be that part, then I think that's kind of the beginning of where all the problems start. I feel like a lot of young kids have these beautiful, big ideas and there, and it takes a lot to baby step those ideas into the world and, and show a grown up. And 
I can't even imagine how many times a grown-up who isn't in a position to see the beauty of that perspective shuts it down. Mm -hmm. And they probably have no idea that they've just shut down a, the beginning of a beautiful, blossoming um, life mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. So I feel like becoming the star of one's own movie is an important perspective for, for healing and for honoring our stories, no matter how young we are and what we've been through is significant. Mm -hmm. And our, our ideas about life is significant. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, we're obviously, this is a great book for anyone. And, and I mean that anyone that's struggling through through this, the, these, the, the, with anxiety and, and these kind of intrusive thoughts. But I also think it would be a very important book for all kids to kind of experience, to help them gain a perspective, to help them understand that not everybody is thinking the same way. They, not everybody sees life through the same lens. And, and I think that this would be a wonderful way to help kids develop empathy, not only for somebody who's struggling with anxiety, but, but just to help them gain an empathy for, for all peoples. I like that. I hadn't thought of it like that. That's very lovely. Well, I mean, I, I think it is. It, and Now, I'm not going to tell you that when I was 15, I was this enlightened person who had empathy for everybody. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, had, I, I had my knucklehead years, and they probably, well, it's probably knucklehead decades. Um, <laughs> but with the help of, of, of my wife, with the help of my daughter, my son, um, helping them through their struggles, it, it, you know, I have a different perspective on 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 life and on people, and and a lot of times, you know, when I look at somebody, somebody that may have, when I was younger, made me feel like, oh, you're being selfish or you're being this or that. Sometimes now I'm able to look at that person and go, wow, I have I have no idea how it feels to be struggling in that way. But if you're making mm -hmm. these choices, you must be in a lot of pain. And and I want to figure out a way to support you. That's beautiful. Yeah. It's amazing um, when you experience life as a grown-up, especially having kids, how that whole wealth of empathy just opens up against a person's will even. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you're... If you're um, in touch with the pain of people in our lives, you know, like especially as a parent, mm -hmm. you know, I think that's that's really what kind of put things into perspective. It was like the great aligner mm -hmm. of things in my life, having a child mm -hmm. and seeing how fragile we are all are, how we develop in, into who we believe we are because of random, random series of inputs. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, I can see that myself looking back and, you know, the anger kind of melts into curiosity. Mm -hmm. um, gosh, what was that person going through that mm -hmm. they behaved like that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It becomes more interesting. It certainly doesn't alleviate, you know, the, the trouble that it causes, but it is a more empowered perspective. Yeah, and I think being a mom definitely um, was the catalyst to me seeing things through that perspective. Yeah, we we talk about life changing events. Uh, there's there's nothing that was in you know that changed my life so drastically, so wonderfully, so instantaneously as when my <laughs> son was born. I it was literally. Yeah, we're talking about it, and I was reading stories to him when he was in the womb and all that kind of stuff. But boy, oh boy, when when he came into the world, I, just the way <laughs> I looked at life changed, it, and it was yeah. boom I, in a flash. Yes, I hear you. It's it's like the most shocking thing that ever happened to me, mm -hmm. for sure, mm -hmm. and. Especially like now my son is seven and he's having some anxiety because he is so sensitive like mm -hmm. I was. So I'm seeing it from a whole nother perspective. Just how, how s sensitive people, people who are super aware of other 
goings on outside of themselves and super quick to make associations. Those people tend to, maybe it's a genetic thing, I don't know, but they, they tend to get stuck more often in that kind of intrusive thought predicament. <laughs> so we've been working a lot together and telling stories about it. And a lot of my books that I wrote before the glue brain book were um, inspired by my son and, and how to help him, you know, birth his selves again and again, a little bit further into the world and, and not to be, you know, disintegrate at the slightest look somebody may give. And it's, it's, it's fascinating watching, um, a little guy develop. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, we've talked about this on the podcast a lot and I'm really glad you brought that up. It, I, I think as parents, it, and it is, it's important for parents to protect their kids. And, uh, I think a lot of times when, as parents, if we see somebody who says something to our kids, um, you know, we, our initial reaction is to, to defend them and, you know, and, and to stop it from happening. And, and, and that's, that's very important. But I think also what's important and what we oftentimes forget to do is to, sit down with our kids and empower them to kind of deal with these situations so that they don't disintegrate. So true. It's so true. And we can't control other people. And, and there are an awful lot of unregulated people in the world. So I talk with that a lot with my son because I was like that when I was little. Someone just glanced at me a particular way and I felt diminished. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we talk a lot about not being able to control other people or even interpret accurately what another person is giving out. And I try to introduce him to those concepts you were talking about, about we don't know what they are going through mm -hmm. in this moment. Mm -hmm. And it's so funny how it's such a, a, a an unnatural way for so many humans to be, to not take the outside world personally. It's, it's, um, it's a, a practice that really takes practice. <laughs> well, it, and it does. And I think it, it, you know, I think we take things personally because of that fight or flight. You know, it's just, you know, like, oh, I, I have to be, I have to defend myself. I have to be ready to, 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 to fight or to run away because of, of danger. And, and, you know, for some reason that get, gets misaligned or, or magnified or, um, you know, I, and I, and I'm, talking over my head right now. So I should get back to talking about nice little picture books here. Uh <laughs> <laughs> but I do love what you said, and I, I, I do ag agree with you that we're in a, a, a real interesting fork in the road with um, the survival mentality versus something maybe a little bit more spiritually aligned. <laughs> so I do want to spend some time talking about your picture books that were written for younger kids. Um, sure. So why don't you tell us uh, about, uh, I think it's the Book of Hearts, is it? Yeah, I can, I have one over here. I can, well, it's not on a video, I forgot. But yeah, I've got um, three other books. Um, the Book of Hearts is is for all ages, really. It's, um, it's a book about um, empathy, I suppose, and all the sorts of things we're talking about. Um, each page is a different heart, like a, a wild heart or a heart in mourning or a greedy heart or a criminal heart or a, a helpful heart. It goes through um, with illustrations on each page, so many different ways of being through the context of hearts. And then basically then the book ends with an understanding heart because all the hearts are more apt to get bigger when they're understood. Um, so the book is really for for um, anyone, um, from children to grown-ups. And it, it came to me one night in a dream, the book, because I was I was so frustrated with um, people judging each other so harshly on on Facebook threads, and it just seemed like people weren't meeting at the bridge of understanding about things and how we all have a corrupt side to us and also a side that grows wiser being understood. So that was 
that book. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you, you're so right. There's, I, I was talking to, to someone last night about no one is all evil. No one is all good. We're all kind of shades of, of different things. Yeah. Yeah. Another title um, that really catches my eye is Feed It to the Worms. Yes, Feed It to the Worms was something that um, my son and I would talk about. It comes from a story I told um, to my son about one of our strategies. We have so many different strategies to be empowered in, in our household, and we, we do this by storytelling. And Feed It to the Worms is a story about um, throwing all the, the thoughts that we don't like to the worms. And when he was younger, it was a fun thing to do because we pretended the worms loved the empower, uh, disempowered thoughts that they tasted like pizza. <laughs> so it was something that um, resonated with my son when he was about four. And um, all of, there's 57 very short stories, each one with an illustration, and feed it to the worms. And they range from silly to little anecdotes to to um, empower children, very small children, when they're feeling sad about a bully or feeling like their mom is mad at them for not listening or just ridiculous, silly, fun things. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, those are, they're silly, and but I think it's, it's a message that is so important that the message that that you were just talking about is delivered in in these short fun silly stories with pictures but it really is the same message that uh one of our other guests father greg boyle who is, is a founder of homeboy industries the largest gang intervention program in the world and it's a message that those gang members need to hear and it's a message that he delivers so be- beautifully in his book, Barking to the Choir. And um, it, it, you just reminded me that, that this is a message we need throughout our lives. Yes, yeah. it's true. Yeah. And, and I, that guy is, is amazing. I know about him. And he's what, a, what an incredible person. Uh, yeah, Father Greg is pretty incredible. Homeboy Industries is mind bending just be I've, I've mentioned it on the podcast in the past being there and this in in la in a very urban part of la that you know can be scary i guess and with uh you know and and homeboy industry is on first glance it's filled with men and women and there are tattoos and there are hugs and smiles and love and sometimes you know the images just don't it's like whoa wait a minute this doesn't belong but the love is so strong it's just an amazing place yeah and i think that it's so wonderful when two people together recognize that connecting is so much more fun and so much more opening than disconnecting Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's so many people just walking around miserable and and you know denounced vulnerability. But when you when when I every time I connect with someone who wants to open to the humanness of themselves and me together, it's it's just such a magical experience. Yeah. Well, we're really excited, and I know people are going to want to connect with you, and they're going to want to know when they can get their hands on the girl who was born with brain in her, glue in her brain, uh, because it's coming out in just a couple of weeks. So where can folks go online to connect with you? Um, it can be um, purchased on Amazon, of course, mm-hmm. um, or my website, um, www.jess at jessicalaurelcane.com. Um, I think um, you have that as a tag yep. on the interview. Mm-hmm. Um, or um, that's those are the main places it can be purchased. Great, great. Well, we're really excited. Uh, we were talking today to 
the author of, and let me make sure I get this right, the author of the, the soon-to-be-released The Girl Who Was Born With Glue In Her Brain, a uh, picture book for everyone, especially <laughs> kids 13 and uh, above. Um, and I include myself at, with be, being a kid 13 and above. Uh, <laughs> we've been talking to Jessica Laro Kane. Jessica, thank you so much for being part of our show. Oh, thank you so much, Jed. It was so fun talking with you. Please be sure to join us for the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. I am so excited. We are speaking about the brand new book from Dr. Seuss. It's Dr. Seuss's Horse Museum. And we are going to be speaking with uh, the, the, the last surviving editor who worked person with Dr. Seuss, Kathy Goldsmith. We're also going to be speaking to the executive editor, editor for young readers at Random House, uh, Alice Janitis. It's a fascinating conversation about the most beloved children's author in the world, Dr. Seuss, in a brand new book, Horse Museum. That's the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Hey, you know, you don't have to be the most beloved children's author to be a guest on the Reading With Your Kids podcast. We love celebrating debut authors. We love celebrating independent authors. We love celebrating self-published authors. We love celebrating authors who feel passionate about their beautiful children's book. Being a guest, it's fun, it's easy, and it gives you the chance to tell thousands and thousands of people about your fantastic children's book. All you need to do is go to our website, readingwithyourkids.com, click on the contact button, let us know about your great book. We will let you know the next easy steps. We want to thank the folks who made today's show so very wonderful, Jessica Laurel Kane. Be sure to check out The Girl Who Was Born With Glue In Her Brain. I also want to thank my amazing producer who was not born with any glue in her brain, Fatima Khan. Be sure to check out her blog at readingwithyourkids.com. I want to thank my beautiful wife who often thinks that I was born with glue in my brain and a lot of other stuff in my brain for all the support that she gives me. And of course, I want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And as always, thank you so much for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Peace. <laughs>